Hello and welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast, where you get a refreshing, uplifting and optimistic perspective on life in your 40s and 50s. I'm your host, Lindsay DeSwart, and I'm delighted that you've joined us here today. So let's jump right in. Hello, hello, it's Lindsay. How are you doing? It's so lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining us at the uh, Magical Midlife Podcast. So I am delighted to welcome you. It's a solo episode tonight, so it'll just be a short one. But it's Halloween. So I wanted to record this in time for Halloween because Halloween's a really, really important time. And it's not just about the candy, although I pretty love that, pretty much love that too. Um, although there is a bit of a story that uh, about that. When uh, when we first moved to Canada, we took the kids obviously over there. They were three and five. And I can safely say the amount of candy and sweets that they actually got when we went trick or treating um, was literally, literally, honestly, more sweets and candy than they'd ever seen in their lifetime. (laughs) It was so many sweets. I still suffer from like shock, the fact that they can fill up pillowcases full of candy. Anyway, so now that we've come back to England and it's just my daughter, uh, yeah, she's a little bit old, of course, so she's not really doing it now. But anyway, so I hope you had a fantastic time, because by the time you listen to this, if you were going out with the kids, um, or it may actually be, you'll probably remember the time when you were doing it with your kids too, and it seems like a long time ago now. Anyway, so you're probably the one at the door now, maybe giving out some sweets and candy and trying not to eat too much for yourself. Personally, there was always a bit of a Mars bar tax on for me. I always said, Kids can eat all the candy they get so long as I get the Mars bars. Mars bar tax. Perfectly good way of going through Halloween. Anyway, that's not the reason I'm talking about Halloween tonight. The reason I'm talking about Halloween tonight is because it's also called Samhain, or you can pronounce it various different ways. So um, it's the beginning of winter. So we've come to the end of autumn. We've got the clocks changing. We are going into the darkness. Um, in this hemisphere, obviously, we're going to six months of darkness. And it's a really fantastic time to start going within yourself. Now, as you'll be, as you've seen, if you um, get my emails, it's really an interesting time right now because we seem to have so many choices ahead of us, yet so few decisions. And whilst you're looking to make decisions and to be able to move forward, there is also this overriding sense of overwhelm almost about don't know what to do next. Everything that you used to do isn't working it doesn't matter how hard you, you know, you push and you strive. That's not the energy that's going to get you any further. So I really wanted to dig into that a little bit today because I'm hearing it. I've been doing um, energy readings for people, just short energy readings. So I'll also I'll put a link in the in the show notes if you wanted to book your own energy reading. And it's it's just a short energy reading, but it'll give you a snapshot of something that's going on at the moment for you. Anyway, so with the energy readings that I've been doing for people, it's so funny because so much of the same energy is coming up for people. And it really is this energy of feeling almost out of your depth with what's available to you right now. And you might be being called in many different directions, but none of them seem quite right. None of them really feels like, you know, you just got the energy to get up and go and be motivated to do it. It really feels as if now is the time to to question, to meditate, to have relaxing baths, pull cards, journal, all the rest of it. And so what I'm going to do tonight is actually I have pulled a card for you, um, for everybody who's listening. So we're going to tune into that card and I will tell you what that card brings about for you. And then also, as I tuned into that card, well, it actually reminded me of one of my favourite books, which I'm going to share with you. I'm also going to give you some journal prompts because I've been listening to all sorts of meditations around the full moon, the eclipse um, coming up to this time of year. And I've heard some really useful journal prompts, which I'd like to share with you. And they all tie in really nicely with the cards. So lo and behold, it's almost as if there's divine intervention. Would you believe it? So let's start with the journal prompt. So if you've got a pen and paper, 
um, write them down. And if not, uh, if you're driving, then maybe I'll put them in the show notes so you can come back to them. And if not, you know what, when this episode finishes, then maybe just ponder about it because you generally get the answers pretty quickly if you've got some nice quiet time to think about it. Okay, so questions are, where am I still playing small? That's one of the questions. The other one is, where am I saying one thing, but not allowing myself to step fully into that? That's what led me. That's a really bad question, isn't it? I must have written it down wrong. Where am I saying one thing, but not allowing myself? That led me to, when I started to rephrase that question, That led me to the book, The Four Agreements, um, by Don Miguel Ruiz. And I don't know if you read that. If you haven't read it, it's a really quick, short read, but it's profound. It's incredible. Anyway, so the first agreement is actually to be impeccable with your word. And it's funny, this comes up when you start doing goal setting or manifesting or anything, because so often we will say one thing, but then we don't follow through. And we don't honour our commitments to ourselves, not to anybody else, but to ourselves. And this is about being impeccable with your word. And the place it starts, it's with us. We'll challenge our own boundaries before anybody else will challenge us. But if we cannot be true to our own word, then how can we expect anybody else to honour what we're saying and to give us the time and to believe us, Um, including the universe. When we're looking to manifest stuff, if we say we want something, do we actually really want that or do we change our mind? And, you know, if you're journaling and you're writing down sort of things you want to manifest, are you writing down one thing and then two days later you're writing down something different? So number of things within that. So there is the question of where am I saying one thing but not allowing myself. So that's also about allowing yourself to receive what it is you want. But if you're asking for something, you've got to be clear on what you want. So if you're asking for something, you've got to be impeccable with your word. So it all kind of goes round in a circle, if you know what I mean. There is the book, as I say, The Four Agreements. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. And then also based on that, I pulled a card for us from my Mystical Shaman Oracle card deck. And the reason I pulled a card tonight is just because it really is the energy of going within, of being quiet, of finding stillness, of not taking action, but allowing our feelings and our guidance to kind of bubble up within us from deep within our soul, from the earth, you know, from the stars and moon and sky above. If you're listening to this, there's still a lot of energy of the eclipse full moon. So actually spending some time outside, if you can, is a lovely place to journal, especially if you're sitting around a fire or something like that. That's really nice. Anyway, so funnily enough, the card that I pulled was standstill. The standstill card is all about finding the time to be with whatever's coming up, whether it's a new idea a new hope or dream that you want to bring to fruition. It's not the time to be, um, you know, burrowing away to take action. It's really sitting with things and letting this grow almost like a, a seed. Letting that seed really be nurtured by the soil, by the darkness. So, yeah, really go inside for this and journal about it and maybe allow yourself to be creative just to see what new ideas brew, what new shoots will come from this seed. Um, Because it'll take you in a completely different direction. Now, also, one of the things, actually, when I was just putting this idea of this podcast together today, I wanted to share something that came up in our women's circle last Friday because it was an absolute gem and who knew? So, oh my goodness, thank you, Donna Walker, for this. It was brilliant. So we had a really small group, so we really got to dig into some fantastic ideas about aromatherapy. Anyway, so talking about going inside, being with your own ideas, obviously one of the ways to do that is just by having a really nice, you know, quiet, relaxing bath. So with that, you can say aromatherapy oils, perfect. But I don't know if you've ever made the same mistake that I did, which is you just put oils in the bath. And then actually, when the oils touch your skin... It burns your skin. And quite frankly, with lavender and stuff, it hurts like heck. So we discussed this with Donna and Donna said what you actually need to do is you get an egg cup of milk. You put your oils into the milk 
and then you put the milk into the water as it's pouring into the bath and that way the the um the milk emulsifies the oils and distributes it throughout the water in many different layers so actually you don't get burnt by the oils oh my goodness who knew how cool is that so i just thought to share that little gem with you courtesy of donna walker thank you donna Anyway, so it's one of the ways of going inside and just being rather contemplative is having a nice warm bath with candles, maybe, and then maybe come out and journal afterwards. But that's the energy, right? Before we move into the chaos of Christmas and everything else, I would really recommend over these next couple of weeks, you give yourself time to be with the darkness. The clocks have changed, so the evenings are darker. Chances are kids aren't around or the kids don't need you as much as they once did Um, and so just like this whole midlife gift let's really step into that harness that having your time back again and there's I mean you know especially with Halloween and all the little kids and stuff around you might love it you might hate it I don't know certainly I miss those times because it was always a time I really enjoyed being with the kids however Now that I'm in a completely different phase, as are you, I'm sure, maybe you honour having that time to yourself now and taking those dark evenings to journal. So some of the other journaling prompts that I really like are about what small steps, what rituals, what things can you do to anchor your self-trust and belief? Are you following any rituals? Are you doing any daily rituals? How are you setting yourself up? Now, rituals work really well within menopause. And I know I don't love talking about menopause, but it makes a massive difference if you actually really look after your daily rituals, because that's the easiest way to start changing your lifestyle habits so that you actually feel you know, more comfortable going through menopause and it doesn't then start taking over everything. There are ways that you can improve it gradually by just lifestyle choices. And I'm not saying that's for everybody. One of the other journaling prompts that I really liked was, how am I neglecting or minimising myself? Ooh, that's an interesting concept, isn't it? How am I neglecting or minimising myself? So that's a little bit like, where am I still playing small? I, as you know, because I talk about this all the time and I talk about it with my guests and I email to people about it, we are waking up into an incredible time for us as women, partly because of the energy of what's going on, but also partly because we're in our midlife. And so we are coming into the second wind almost of incredible strength. We're really being able to tap into our power again. But in order to use that power wisely, you've got to find what's important to you we're not in that phase anymore of doing what pleases everybody else what's socially acceptable um we need to find the power to say no more often and i don't know about you but it might be getting easier actually i'm finding saying no very easy these days finding the power to say no to do what's important to you to really tune into what's important to you and i'm hoping that those journal prompts will help you to do that as well and be patient actually When you're really tuning into what's important to you, you've got to be patient and not rush it, not push through it, not work through the pain. That's not what this energy is about. This energy is about being, making yourself comfortable so that nothing is rushed, giving yourself time to ponder your new decisions, ponder your new steps. And so you can actually create something different, not just churn out, same old, same old, but to create something completely different and fresh for you. And it may not come to fruition until the spring. And if that's what it's about, then that's what it's about. I think you might be surprised at how quickly things are moving. But just like anything, the more you feel what's going on, the more you allow yourself to really dig into what's going on. I do believe that things will manifest a lot more quickly for you. I'm going by my experience and it's certainly happening. Things are changing fast, really fast and quite frankly, beyond my wildest dreams. Yet I've had to sit with this for some time and I believe that a lot of you are probably going through exactly the same thing. So I urge you to give yourself the time to sit with what's brewing and to let go of what no longer serves you and be okay with it. No guilt. No remorse, just 
be okay with letting go of stuff that's just not important to you anymore. Because the stuff that is important is crying out for your attention. It just needs your attention. It needs you to notice it. And it may be that it's brewing within your your solar plexus um, chakra. So that area just between your belly button and below your heart. That area is your solar plexus chakra. So much power in there. But it's also about your commitment. Commitment to yourself. Commitment to your promises. Commitment to how you show up in the world. So you might want to tune into that. If you're doing any meditation, you can just allow the thoughts to drop from your head down through your heart and sit in that area of your solar plexus and see what changes about your ideas and your thoughts and journal about it and allow some of it to be right and allow some of it to be wrong. And all of it's okay, just as it is. It is just perfect as it is. So be with that during this next time of moving into the winter. And yeah, and I I just wish you, I wish you peace actually at this time. I really wish you peace because there's enough turmoil going on within us and in the world around us. So if you can find peace within you, then you are actually serving the world in the greatest way you possibly can. As I said, I have promised that I will, if you come over to the Magical Midlife Facebook group, I will put links to this show in there. Just come along. You just need to ask to join. There's a couple of questions to answer, but it's nothing demanding. It's just so I know that, you know, you want to be here for the right reasons and also know how to best serve you. So if you come over and join the Magical Midlife Facebook group, um, I will put links in there for a thing I wrote a while ago, actually, about saying no, guilt-free. So I'll add that in there. And also I will put a link so that if you wanted to book an energy reading, um, you can do that too. It's for free, but it would be a lovely opportunity for us to actually speak together and for me to get to know you a little bit. Anyway, so this episode is a little bit different, a little bit shorter, uh, all about Halloween and Samhain. And I wish you I wish you some beautiful dark evenings of self-contemplation and quiet time and relaxation and getting to know yourself at this amazing time that we've been gifted. And don't eat too much candy because I might be cashing in the Mars bar tax, although I'm having to buy the Mars bars myself. So eek. anyway, Lovely to see you here today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really, really grateful. Please leave your reviews if you've enjoyed the episode, if you've loved the show. And I look forward to seeing you in the Magical Midlife Facebook group and on the next episode. Okay, take it easy. Keep living your magical midlife. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you've enjoyed the conversation, please come and leave a review. If you go to the Apple Podcasts app and scroll down to the bottom of the podcast page and then you'll find the ratings and review section, please invite your friends to come and listen by sharing the link and you can join the conversation and let me know who you'd like to hear interviewed and what topics you'd like discussed over at Facebook on the Magical Midlife group. You can also find me on Instagram at Lindsay DeSwart where the conversation will also continue. I can't wait to see you on the next episode and once again, keep living your magical midlife.